Hey everyone, it's Azora Hype here, and I'm joined by the amazing people from Blaze Manga, Simon and Pedro. Yes, I rolled my R's there, and they are the awesome people that created the art for my channel, Azora Hype. Today is going to be a little bit of a different video. It's going to be super fun. We're going to be getting to know Blaze Manga and what they love in a Game of Thrones. I have five unique questions for this conversation, and then we're going to talk a little bit about how they made the art. It's going to be really awesome. It's going to be really unique, and it's going to be a fun video. Also, make sure that you click on that subscribe button and the link to subscribe in the description of this video. It will keep you updated for all of my videos for a Game of Thrones Season 7. Now, into the video. What's going on, Simon? Hey guys, this is Simon from Blaze Manga. I'm pretty excited to be here and let's talk some Game of Thrones. And Pedro! Hey guys, I'm Pedro Blaze. I'm really happy to be here in this interview. I'm very excited and let's do this. Let's awesome. do this. So, overall so far, guys, we're going to talk a little bit about the channel art first, but let's get hype first. Let's talk Game of Thrones Season 7. Yeah, let's do it. Woo! Now, going into the season, what have you? What were you most excited about? What was the thing that you were looking forward to the most? So, first first of all, um, we ended Season 6 with Daenerys going into war. So, we start in Season 7. I want to see where that war is going. Of course, I know it's not going to be the first thing we're going to see, but we... I wanted to see the planning. I wanted to see what they wanted to do, what their strategy was gonna be. We were thinking, I was thinking, hey, Daenerys has got three dragons. She's got like seven armies. I know. <laughs> and she's gonna win this. <laughs> she's gonna win this, but... So I wanted to see what their strategy was gonna be because knowing Game of Thrones, it's not gonna be that easy. Or he's gonna make it, he's gonna make it you where... You think where this has a happy ending? I... <laughs> Definitely doubt it. <laughs> you haven't been paying attention. <laughs> you haven't been paying attention. No, so I knew it wasn't gonna be easy for Daenerys, but everything was looking so good for her. I wanted to see how she was gonna do. So that was the first thing I was looking forward to. Yeah, for in my in my case, I just wanted to see war. You know, I wanted to see the dragons destroying the Lannisters, soldiers, something like that, or. A huge battle. I wanted to see a huge battle. That's the main thing I wanted to see. I wanted to know where um, the big battle is going to take place. We still haven't had a big battle per se as, as of the latest episode. But I wanted to see a huge battle and I wanted to see Daenerys meet some of the other characters and see her interact with them. For example, we already got the meeting between her and Jon Snow and that was pretty awesome. Well, I want to see a conversation between Daenerys and Jaime maybe or Daenerys and Cersei. That would be, that would be epic. That would be some... Do you think that Jon Snow will be riding a dragon? Oh yeah, oh yeah, in both senses. <laughs> in both senses? Oh, uh, I'm, I'm not talking about Rhaegal. Ah, uh. uh, okay, yeah. No, <laughs> you, you, you saw her look on... How you say that? Look, Courtney? No, 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 she's like shaking him out. She oh, was yeah, shaking yeah, him yeah. out the whole time. Now, the next episode has been spoiled, the leaks are... Uh, I really hope yeah, that doesn't... Yeah, I know. I haven't seen the episode. I haven't seen the episode. I really hope that that doesn't ha for, happen for season eight. Of course, you know, I don't want to be. Uh, I don't want the end of the spoiled uh, story to be spoiled. Um, this is such a great story. It's on par with Lord of the Rings for me. So, uh, yeah. but yeah, you know, I, I was looking forward to some of the similar things. Uh, I really want to see, obviously, them battle White Walkers. I want to see John fight a White Walker again and and win again. Um, now, should oh, we one question, Kyle. How do you think they're gonna meet the White Walkers? They're really. Uh, on the other side of the wall, and I don't, I don't know how they're gonna get through Westwood. Well, if you look at the opening credits, it looks like the sea beside Eastwatch, which Sandor saw in his flames, in uh -huh. his flame vision, looks like it's frozen. So, I think, I, here's what I think is gonna happen. I think it's gonna be a two-pronged attack, they're gonna scale the wall, and they're gonna go around. And, and they're just gonna walk around the ocean, walk around the wall. The, 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 the night that this, I think, I think it might be, it might happen two ways. I, I think it's they're gonna walk around and they're gonna go over slash through the wall. So I think, I think wow. the wall will fall. They're like part of the wall. I mean, I don't know. The wall's humongous. I don't know if all of it will fall, but maybe part of it, and then um, they can get through, and then the magic will be gone, and then yeah. you know, possibly that would be huge. It's huge. Yeah, it's absolutely huge. Um, so. Yeah, so that's what we were looking forward to there. Uh, I think we're all pretty much on the same page. Big battles. Um, obviously, the drama is amazing for the show. What's been your favorite moment so far of the season? I, you know what? I, you know what's crazy? I, I love the Sandor vision, but I really love the cold open in episode one. That was amazing. Ooh, yeah, yeah. We, we were just talking about the how huge their army is, but you can see they have three giants too. Oh, 
That was a good moment too. Maybe even more. That's true. Okay. No cheating. You have to pick one moment so far this season that was your your favorite moment. Man. Uh... <laughs> it's, it's not the great war on Miss Anderson. Definitely uh, not no. that one. <laughs> but she looks I think, great. Looks I great. think this far it will be John Smith, John meeting Daenerys. I think we were all looking forward to that moment. Uh, at least for me, that was the best. That, that was the best. Uh, the best scene of this season so far. Best conversation. Best conversation. Yeah, the one in her throne room. Yeah, that was great. Oh yeah, that was. Great. Simon, are you on the same page? Uh, I will have to say, let's go back to episode one. Not the opener. The opener was pretty awesome. But the ending. The ending was orchestrated so beautifully. It was so silent. The, mu you, the music was building up. You see the dragons arriving. You see Daenerys arriving. She puts her hand on the sand and then she goes to, to the throne room, passes by and goes to the war room. And she's like, shall we begin? That was the best... The best ending for an episode i think that was crazy because it was like 25 percent of the episode or 20 percent of the episode and it was mainly silence so the way they pulled that off was you know people have complained about the pacing of the season so far i just i just say you know what we have 10 episodes left enjoy it that's that's what i have yeah. to say that's fake news way. with all that crybaby shit i know man i know i know I, I do wish we have more episodes but if there's so much story left just tell the story you have the best way you can you know and let's enjoy what we have when me and George interviewed Paula Fairfield at uh, Con of Thrones, she does all the sound design. Uh, she makes dragon sounds and White Walker sounds, and uh, it's hilarious the conversation we got to have with her. But she was saying that in season eight, we're going to have bigger episodes, an hour and a half to almost two hours. So 80, 80 to 90 minutes uh, to almost two hour episodes. Every single one of them? Every single one of them is going to be a full movie length episode. Dude, six that's movies. awesome. Yeah. So it's like six movies next year? Is it? Yeah, yeah exactly. Like years. Uh, well, that's not confirmed. We don't know yet. But, um, oh, yeah. oh, man. And I got a big announcement that I'm going to be making sooner than later. Uh, I possibly may be going to Europe for four weeks to Croatia, Northern Ireland, Spain, and Iceland to all the locations to uh, vlog over there. We, we still have to confirm a few things, but I just dropped the bombshell. Valyrian steel bombshell! How, co how cool would that be? <laughs> well, we know it's going to be the last season, so we want to enjoy it as much as possible. Um, but guys, oh, yeah. we already talked about what you were looking forward to the most and what was your favorite moment. What were your impressions on the season so far? If you had to rate it out of five chickens, my old scale, KSC scale, what would you rate it out of? Oh, from one to five? Oh yeah, one yeah. out of five, five chickens. Mm. So you can you can say spicy chickens. You can you can say juicy chickens. However you want to spin it. I think right now it's like grilled chicken <laughs> with a with a lot of juice, but not 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 perfect yet. Yeah, still cooking, still cooking. Still cooking. We st I will say four out of five grilled chickens, but we still need some to put some Tabasco sauce on them. <laughs> <laughs> so you need to add a little spice. Pedro, fin yeah. finish. You never gave us an answer out of five. We need, we need to hear it. Yeah, I said four out of five. What are you, Pedro? Uh, four out of five, yeah. <laughs> See, I think by the end of the season, it will be like a 4.9, because the last two episodes are, are basically, what, three hours in total together? So Nice. More than that? Wait, no. Yeah, it'll be close to that. But I, I think, you know, obviously they have to set a lot of stuff up. And uh, the next episode, it looks like we're going to be getting a giant payoff. So, yeah, my, my impression so far, I mean, there has been a few things that have thrown me off. Obviously, people getting places super fast is, I mean, uh, it's it's got to be executed a certain way. So people are complaining about how fast Euron is getting around from King's Landing to Castle Lee Rock. How magical teleporter. Yeah, little fingers jetpack we like yeah, to call it. Yeah. <laughs> um, so okay, so we're all on the same page about that. So we're all we're all enjoying the season. I think that uh, you know we have kind of the same sentiment, the three of us, that the books are different than the show at this point. We both enjoy both of them uh, as much as we can, but the show uh, is obviously a huge spectacle. It's uh, the biggest show on television at this point. Okay, here's another question for you, and I've been thinking about this. Uh, I was thinking about this today. Which actor has made the biggest improvement from season six to season seven? Oh, from season six to seven? It's hard, right? Yeah, I was gonna say Jamie because his acting has been developing, but that's since season one, you know? And uh, his face acting is really good. It, just based on the last episode we uh, watched, when he realizes what uh, the old lady is, just his face said everything we need to. To know, you know. Same with Euron when he's like talking crap about Cersei in front of him. He's like with his faces. He doesn't have to say anything. Just with his faces, you already know what he's thinking. It's so, it's so good. 
But speaking of Euron, he's been stealing every scene he's in mm. this season, especially mm. compared to last season. So I don't know what the name of the actor is, but that guy. Pilu Aspect. Euron. What's his name? Pilu Aspect. Yeah, that guy. I don't know this guy. That guy has <laughs> been really funny this season. <laughs> Honestly, yeah, I would say in in that regards to the question, he would be the the answer for me because he in season six. He came off to me like a, I don't know, like a, like a joke, like he like was gonna die bag. so fast. But then now seeing him this season, he's like, oh my god, he's actually achieving things. Yeah, he's, he's actually, actually causing ma- damage. Yeah, he's making <laughs> some damage, man. <laughs> <laughs> he, he killed two of the sand snakes, so we are grateful for that. <laughs> he had like a fin- finish him. He like gave a fatality to the first one. <laughs> and it's so funny because he finished them off with their own weapons. <laughs> mm, that is true. But yeah, he's acting so, uh, last season. I think it was just like, oh, it was regular. He's gonna die next season. But no, I'm, he's doing really good now. After I'm he went to Hot Topic, he, he got a new outfit. And- <laughs> <laughs> uh, you, know, you know, I'm honestly gonna say... I'm gonna say Arya or Sansa. I don't know. I was thinking of those, but I was just like Simon said, from season one to season seven, I mean, their improvement has been humongous. But from six to seven, it's been about the same, I think. I, I think it's so- I think it's Sophie Turner. I think I think Sophie Turner. I mean, I think that Lena Headey will probably win Best Actress this year. She got robbed last year, in my opinion. Uh, Kit Harrington, uh, Kit Harrington, and Lena Headey will probably be nominated again. I can't see it. I mean, maybe Amelia gets. I, I don't know if Amelia will get nominated. She's not as good as an actress as Lena is. Um, nah. Lena, Lena is just excellent, excellent. I really hope that we we, we don't get screwed over this year for uh, for actors. I, I think one of them will win an award. Yeah, yeah, me too. Maybe even Maisie. Maybe even Maisie will get. I mean, who knows who they will nominate? And imagine what episode they're gonna pick to nominate. I mean, I can't. I mean, it must be the last episode. It's gonna be 82 minutes long. Can you guys wait yeah. for that? Oh my god, I can't. Yeah, I can't wait. It all depends on what happens in the last two. You know, because last season, what the last two episodes is what defined season six. Episode 9 and 10 is when everybody talks out when they remember season 6, you know. The big battle of the bastards and the... Winds of Winter. That was yeah, like the best deadly. moment. Alright, so we got some good choice. You guys say Euron and I say, you know, the Stark Girls. Um, now, now here's the big question. We had Hold the Door last season. What's going to be the biggest twist slash what the fuck moment? hold the door moment in this season something that we're not expecting because there's been the plot leaks that's been smashed to death we've obviously had more time to think about all the things that were going to happen this season we had a longer wait so what, what do we think is going to happen i mean what what's going to be the big, is gonna happen? The, the big wtf moment that will shock everyone hmm. uh i don't know because like if i see it coming there is not it's not shocking anymore um something maybe a dragon dying but they they've been foreshadowing a dragon dying since uh, i think episode two or three i think this is the first episode no 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 i I think when they show that little the mechanic thing yeah the the arrow the 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 dagger or what's it called well i don't know what that's called but you you know well the kyburn's weapon yeah 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 yeah, yeah, it's called a scorpion when they show that they're foreshadowing a dragon dying so uh maybe that would be a shocking moment so far, one of the shocking, the biggest WTF is when the Hound is looking at the flames as he, and he is actually seeing visions. For, for someone that doesn't believe in that sort of shit, for that to happen is like, wow, yeah. right? So we know the Lord of Light is real and he, he wants to do something with all these people, but we don't know what it is. And in last episode, we got a really interesting bomb, I guess, with Melisandre and Lord Varys. That conversation was pretty interesting interesting in my opinion i was actually just editing a video how i believe um i guess i'll drop it now because my video will be out before this gets out but um it, the, the order of the fiery hand in the books uh, Tyrion in one of the Tyrion chapters they're in volantis and uh, he sees the order of the fiery hand and they're they're slaves but they're soldiers slave soldiers that uh serve the the, the giant red priest temple and it's called the red uh the temple of relore and Benero, uh the the highest red priest basically uh says that Daenerys is Azor Ahai so I think that I think that we're gonna see some sort I think we're gonna see some red priests doing some resurrections of their own next season with Jon's army and stuff like that so I think it's gonna be crazy interesting Mm. that's that's interesting if the red priests actually come and join the war just to resurrect well there you know what's crazy too is there's never a thousand less than a thousand or more than a thousand there's always one thousand soldiers 
So 1,000 eyes and one has been talked about in the books, and there's all sorts of symbolism. But I think that she's going over to Volantis to get get a bunch of red priests to come over to Westeros. They need all the help that she can get. And we know that yeah. Thoros of Mir and Melisandre have revived people. So I don't know how many more people will get revived because Jon is special. But um, I think there's going to be something interesting there. With the, I mean, she says she's going to die in Westeros, and so is Varys. So it's going to be real. I thought that conversation was really interesting. But in yeah. Volantis, she can go get some ships maybe or, or something like that. Uh, who do you think is going to kill Melisandra? Arya? I mean, they still got to meet again, right? Yeah, they still, they still got to meet again. I actually think more and more, I, I think more and more that Arya is going to kill Cersei. With Jamie's face? I have no idea. I don't want Jamie to die because I like Jamie. I, like Jamie. Yeah. I know. But I, I, more and more and more, I, I don't know. I have a feeling that Arya is going to be the one to take out Cersei, man. Uh, I could be wrong. Um, I've always believed that it was going to be Jamie. He was going to be the Valonqar. Uh, and, you know, them standing on certain parts of the map, I did a little video on that earlier on in the season, and I thought that that might be a, th a fun theory video to do because she's standing on the neck and Jamie is standing on the fingers, um, yeah, which, yeah, is, which yeah. is pretty tasty. Sure. But, uh, yeah, I, you know, some of this stuff is not going to happen until season eight. They got to save. I mean, Cersei's not going to die until season eight. She's too good of an actress. Yeah, she, yeah, she's the big baddie other than the Night King. I mean,. You know, uh, one thing about the story is we, we don't often uh, get what we want always. I mean, we get the Red Wedding and we get Ned getting his head chopped off. So Daenerys winning the war in Season 7 may not happen. And uh, Jon may just convince her to go north and that may kind of be avoided until maybe the last episode of the whole series. And then they finally tie up in th things in King's Landing and they decide that there isn't going to be an Iron Throne anymore. I don't know how that's going to go, but things are certainly getting interesting. We only have what? Four more episodes this season, and then six next year. Ten episodes total. This will be my last question for you guys. Are you going to cry after Game of Thrones is over? I know I will. <laughs> I'm going to be empty inside. Yeah, I'm going to be empty inside. If I die after I see the end of Game of Thrones, I'll die happy. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing else to live for. <laughs> Man, I'm really, I'm really curious about what uh, the Three-Eyed Raven Bran, well, he has to say to Jon Snow. Like, he has to say, tell him something. Bran is not even Bran anymore. He's like half Bran, half, half. I mean, the Three Eyed Raven's consciousness is technically inside Bran, I think. Which is another, which is another, which is another crazy. What the fuck? Uh, you know, I think that perhaps the next what the fuck moment will be with Bran in a vision this season. Now, actually, you know what? I'm going to say it. The what the fuck, vi what the fuck vision is going to happen is going to be uh, Rhaegar and Lyanna getting married. This season, and we're gonna see that because they got to show John's father, right? Mm -hmm. So that will make him legitimate, right? Like he, they get married. Yep, like, married? that will make him legitimate. And uh, we, we, you know, I don't know how Daenerys would feel about that, but I think that they're both gonna fall in love, and perhaps she, you know, it's really interesting the vision that she had in King the the, the Red Keep at the House of the Undying, where the Red Keep is all destroyed with snow in it and stuff, and then she goes beyond the wall to Drogo. I don't know if that's symbolism for her dying, uh, going to the Nightlands, but. Uh, the moon of my life and all that. I, I don't know. I have a feeling that Daenerys is going to die. I think Jon's going to have to kill her. Dude, uh, I was, because... I, I've been thinking a lot about Game of Thrones and the, so, the whole Azora hype stuff. And I, I was thinking, what if Azora hype is neither Daenerys nor Jon and it's more like their offspring, like their baby. And he's the prince that was promised because he will be a kid and they will have to sacrifice him to the White Walker. Or... To end the war. Or what could be happening is, is that Rhaegar was actually Azora High and that Jon is Lightbringer himself. That would be oh. crazy. Because, oh, oh, you know, uh, Rhaegar put his sword in Lyanna and had a baby. You know what I mean? So I don't I don't know. That's kind of something that's been discussed, too. But I don't want to get I don't want to get too much into crude jokes. Uh, no, right? it's interesting speculation. Just yeah. <laughs> but yeah, this has been a really fun interview, man. We got to do this more, obviously. Um, you know, we got to have you on the channel before the season ends to chat some Game of Thrones live. I know Pedro has a bit of a different schedule than you. But, uh, but yeah, man, and I, I think that we have to obviously talk about the art a little bit. Um, so you're, you guys are going to do a little bit of a, an into how you guys created a, the Azor hype art, right? Uh, yeah, so we have, uh, I mean, what do we talk about? The, the, the entire process or? Or how did we, well, the, the reason the concept. we, the concept behind it came technically from you, Kyle, because you're the one, the one that asked us to do this. Uh, technically, you wanted to. <laughs> That's to, true. To be a Sora hype and relate the a Sora hype character with Jon Snow, so technically we put you in Jon Snow's armor and we give you light, not light bringer, was Longclaw with fire. Hey, 
Hype bringer. Hype bringer. Right. Yeah, it's called hype bringer. Yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> and one of the most interesting aspects of this art, in my opinion, is, is the fiery sword. And I enjoy when you gave me your first uh, feedback. You said something about, about the lines like the flame looked like an extra blade of the sword, the way it was drawn. That was pretty interesting. Like the like the sword had a soul. Yeah, like the sword had a soul. But everybody could see it. So I, I, I want to make sure the fire look on point for that for that piece. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we had a really interesting process because, you know, like like the first couple times you guys made art for me previously when I was Kyle's fucking chickens, it was really just like, yeah, you know what? That's great. I mean, we didn't really. I was just like so happy with with everything. And not that I wasn't happy, but it, this this process was a little bit more fun because we got to go back and forth and change a few things. And then we then then like once we were discussing some of the changes that we made, you had an awesome idea and you're like and I'm like, "Oh my god, that's an even better idea than that idea than that idea we just had." So that was really fun. And uh, I think that after the season we should maybe uh maybe get some more pieces done i'm addicted to getting your art now which is a problem because i have to pay for these things obviously and uh and, I, and i'm poor but uh but it's well worth it obviously you know having proper branding you know we've, we've discussed part of the business side of youtube uh it's important to have that you know, and you you guys know because you guys create uh graphic comics um which which are absolutely amazing uh blaze manga it's called iridescent if anybody hasn't checked it out we'll make sure we get the link in this video for everyone that likes manga like i do but yeah i mean oh man i don't know i, I feel like you guys should be drawing predictions have you guys thought of ever doing that no we, i haven't but drawing that, predictions that's interesting that would be cool because like urtach altanaz does that we, we all know urtach and he's amazing yeah for sure so really really enjoyed talking with you guys and catching up man this has been really fun i'm really excited to see uh, you guys adding the process of how you guys made Azora hype into this video and uh, let's do this again sometime guys you guys down for that uh, yeah for sure awesome and uh, once again this was Simon and Bl and uh, Pedro from Blaze Manga they have the ones who made the Azora hype art for the channel and previously Kyle's fucking chickens art we got some projects that are gonna be coming up for the channel and uh, hopefully you guys will be joining us at Con of Thrones 2018 I know we got we've been talking about some plans about that um, getting you guys a booth and having some pieces for that. But uh, thank you everyone for joining us. For anyone that watches this video, please make sure that you go check out Simon and Pedro's channel. They're also on Facebook, so you guys can go check them out there and on Twitter. I believe it's at Blaze Manga on Twitter, Simon, and uh, Blaze Manga and Iridescent on Facebook. Yes, sir. And, and uh, you guys can also, uh, in the description of this video, go click on their channel. I'll make sure, and uh, you guys can go subscribe to their channel. So make sure everybody goes and, do, goes and does that. These guys are amazing people, amazing artists, and they've helped me out immensely. And this is Kyle. We're going to be signing off. And uh, make sure that you click that like button. It really helps the channel grow. And subscribe to the channel if you want to stay up to date for all of my Game of Thrones Season 7 videos. Seven blessings. Beef. Fuck the king. <laughs> Much for your little time. Oh,